Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Hannah Fletcher. And joining me today, I have the iconic Liana Kia. I am so excited to speak with you. I love your content so much. You give me such like fun, nostalgic, like OG content creator day vibes. And I'm so excited to be able to to pick your brain and to be able to have a conversation with you. So let's get into it. Uh, just just to kind of like give our audience a little bit of more information about who you are and where they can find you. Would you mind go ahead and like just give everybody a little bit of a quick snapshot as to who you are and what you do. And then we'll get started with our combo. Okay, well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's so nice to meet you. Uh, also, hello, everybody. I'm Liana Kia, content creator, um, also known as everyone's favorite Asian mom on the internet. Uh, and I've recently released my new YouTube series called Life of Kia. So yeah, that's me. <laughs> I love it. We're going to get into that too. I want to kick it off with, obviously, you're very hilarious. I like to kind of go back to the beginning and kind of work work my way up to like where we are present day. I'm dying to know, when did you realize that content creation was going to be your medium? I mean, you're so outgoing and you obviously have very fantastic comedic chops. When did you notice this about yourself? Were you like in an improv group ever like back in high school, anything like that? Like where did this all kind of originate for you? Um, well, I used to do musical theater. I actually got started doing musical theater and I'm an actor. So um, I did a lot of that. And I don't think that I was always funny. I think I was always an insecure nervous anxious kid with like you know mega anxiety oh still am <laughs> uh but <laughs> uh I think the funny kicked in like later once I learned to um stop taking myself so seriously mm -hmm. um I don't think I've always wanted to do social media because I'm fully like properly a millennial and we didn't grow up with social media the way that kids these days are growing up with social media so I don't think it was ever um, a trajectory for me. I definitely fell into it. What happened was that the great plague came about and I was at home and I really wanted to get acting jobs, but obviously no one was hiring because everything was shut. You couldn't even go to the cinema. So I was like, okay, well, what am I gonna do? And then so I just started making videos and make funny videos because they entertain me as well um and then it just sort of took off from there that's so neat I I love always being able to speak with content creators and hearing especially like there's nothing like like a COVID content creator you know what I mean like there it's a different <laughs> type of I feel like enthusiasm and appreciation that they have because it's like there's an element of you you're locked inside you're trying to entertain yourself you're trying to even entertain friends and family, you're trying to do something that's cathartic for you. And like, I don't know, there's just this different respect because it's almost like you want the momentum to keep going, but that momentum is to a certain degree rooted in numbers. So obviously you're praying for that spike in your content. And I feel like obviously the creators that I've spoken to when they hit that, they're like, you know, it, it's just, it just hits differently than it does if COVID didn't end up happening. I want to ask you, and I'm always curious to know this, when you found out that you were starting to get that momentum, when you found out that you were starting to become viral, I mean, as humans, we're not conditioned to be able to like deal with knowing that thousands and millions of people are watching us and like critiquing us and laughing and sharing and, you know, whatever their response is. What was it like for you when you found out that, okay, my life is changing, people are noticing who I am, people are really having a lot of input on something that I did to salvage my creative being. What was that like for you? And how do you continue to even deal with that to today? I mean, you have 3 million just on YouTube. That's incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how do I deal with that? Um, I don't really deal with it. I just kind of, I'm just really grateful. Mm -hmm. I'm honestly just really grateful. And I'm really thankful that that many people support and watch the content. And my favorite, absolute favorite thing is when someone sends me a DM on Instagram or something and they say, oh my God, I just recently found you. I love your content because your, your portrayal of the Asian mom character is exactly my mom and my dad or whatever to the T. And you're so relatable. It, I actually almost can't watch you sometimes. And I'm like, good. <laughs> 
Good. I'm glad it hit you like that. <laughs> That's the whole point. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm just really grateful. I'm so I'm so grateful for every single one of my followers, subscribers, um, and I just want to make good stuff and keep making people laugh. Yeah. Well, you have your quality is great in so many ways of of your content. I mean, from how you shoot your content, whatever you're using to film, keep filming with that that camera, that phone, whatever you're doing. Like it's it's such a great look you have such a good clean crisp look to your your content um i want to ask you in terms of like having a work life balance because you are working so often i mean you're you're really producing a lot of content which is incredible and we'll get to the inspiration for that here in a second but how do you find yourself maintaining a work life balance is there much of one i mean i know when you love what you do is it even work you know but i'm sure at times you hit points where you're like okay i need to take a day for myself or recalibrate or even, you know, section off some kind of time. So what does that look like for you? Uh, Well, it's definitely work. It's work. All right. I think um, (laughs) it's it's work. And I I think recently someone said that you're giving up uh, a regular nine to five for a 24 hour job. And that is so true. Like the work does not stop. If you really want it, you could go 24 hours, you know, and you could easily do that as well because it's so easy to just get lost in what you're doing. Um, work-life balance is good. I, I am a huge supporter and advocator for work-life balance. I don't believe in all work and no play. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely make sure that I still see my friends and have a social life and stuff like that. It's, yeah, I make sure it's a priority. <laughs> That's good. That's really, really good. I, I want to ask you too, with your specifically honing in on your YouTube channel, obviously I want to talk about Life of Kia. Talk to me about how this came up, where where you got this idea from, where did the inspiration come from? I, I personally love it. I've seen like almost every episode at this point of that particular part of your channel. I think it's so entertaining. It gives me vibes like, kind of like I don't know if you ever watched the Amanda show or even like elements of like SNL like that's kind of like the the vibe that I get from you and with your content but what I love is that it's like it's all you for the most part which I think is really fascinating but talk to me about how this originated for you and just that whole process of developing the life of Kia uh well it first of all thank you thank you so much for watching and I'm, I'm really glad that um that you liked it uh I have never seen the Amanda show and I've only seen seen bits of SNL so I they're not necessarily inspirations for Mm -hmm. me but um so how it started was the auntie Kia character which is my Asian mom character Mm -hmm. and she just sort of like took over all of my social media platforms and it just happened so I was like okay well I'm just gonna go with it um so you know she but we've only ever seen her being her sassy, angry self in very short, one minute long videos. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I I kept doing that for like two years and thought to myself, I think it's time for her to have a show because she's this fully realized character and so fleshed out already that people still think that she's separate to me. They, they <laughs> still think that she's a different person I don't realize that I would play her to this day to this day people are just like wait are you are you different people um which is very cool it's very interesting also a lot of people find her hold for sound a lot of people find her very attractive I don't know why I don't make her attractive. I don't, hey, listen, listen. I don't, I don't make her, I do not make her sexually attractive. Okay, that's that's not the point. Okay, she's walking around in pajamas, big <laughs> ass pants and a big ass t-shirt. Okay, she's angry all the time. She's not supposed to be attractive. And then I have people literally DMing me saying, okay, like you're fine, but your mom, she's so hot. Okay. If you can guarantee me that you're going to look exactly like that in 10 years, I'm going to date you. I'm like, I, respectfully, I'm all good. <laughs> respectfully, I'm good on that regard, actually. Thank you. Thank you for your interest, but I'm good. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I told you that, but 
no, it's anyways, important. keep going. <laughs> it is. A, well, it is, it yeah. is important. Yeah. And I think I was telling my friend that and she was like, no, you're, you're, you're so surprised. Guys are so into that. And I'm like, yeah. clearly, you clear, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> You're a MILF, I guess, in that case. Yeah, you know? I, 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 by <laughs> accident. <laughs> by accident. I was like, okay, I mean, I'll take that. <laughs> um, so this is what I mean, right? She's such a character and she's such a presence and she's this person that everyone loves. And at, at one point, people were asking her for advice all the time. Um, and so after two years of that, I was like, no, she's got to have a show. She has to. I mean, she's... At this point, we've got to see more of her in longer format. So um, there is a government agency in Australia called Screen Australia, and uh, they have this program called Skip Ahead, and that is online on YouTube. So it's Screen Australia in partnership with uh, YouTube Australia. Oh, okay. And what it is is they fund uh, a few groups of yeah, they fund a few groups and then you're supposed to make a series and then put it onto your uh, social media platform, which is YouTube in this case. Uh, and so I was like, I'm going to apply for this. I don't know if I'm going to get it. And then we did get it very surprisingly because we put in our applicant. This is a government body, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so you know that paperwork is heavy. Yeah. It's heavy yeah. paperwork. Okay. And so we put in our application two minutes before it was due because we started it three days before it was due. The whole thing, budget, log line, synopsis, characters, key creatives, everything, all the good stuff, right? Three days before it was due, we started and we put it in two minutes before it was due. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'm done. This is not going to happen. We're not going to get it. Okay. It's just like, the most bullshit application <laughs> I've ever done. Um, and like definitely uni assignment vibes, uh, but we got it. And I was like, oh shit, that's great. Love it. Love that for me. I'm going to go make a show now. So we made it into a narrative series um, and it explores the Auntie Kia character um, in more depth. They are still very short episodes, so we couldn't really go all the way in. Uh, but you do get to see more than just funny and angry and sassy. Yeah. I will say from an audience, I don't know, obviously this is a little bit of input, but from an audience member's perspective, and I've seen the shorter versions as well, obviously looking through all of your social media too. Um, what I will say is just just because of the fact that they are shorter episodes, again, from my perspective and having watched what I've watched, what is nice is it's like, I'm engaged for that full five minute episode. I'm engaged for the full seven minutes. So yes, they might be like shorter, but again, like from my perspective and, and just to give you some feedback, don't let that be any type of any anything negative. Like I'm engaged for the full amount of time, which Obviously, you know, as a content creator on the back end analytics and everything like that, I'm sure it's great because if I'm engaged, I'm sure other people are too. So that's the really great thing that I love about the series. It also makes me feel like I'm accomplishing something as I'm binging it too. You know, I like binge watching content. I like binge watching shows, but I also like, like the time frame to be suitable to me to be able to binge it, if that makes sense. So yeah. it is very fun to be able to watch. Um, do you have plans continuing on with this series? Like, do you have other characters that you're looking to maybe hone in and kind of do a similar type of thing for? Or do you think that you're going to kind of, obviously she's your most iconic, most beloved character. So do you think that um, this is going to have a lot of episodes per season? Or like, what do you think that the future of this is going to look like for you? Uh, well, we've already started to write our, sorry, let me just, restate that <laughs> you're fine without we've, giving anything away yeah um we've started our application process for development funding also with screen australia uh mm -hmm. the very same government agency i was telling you about uh and that is to turn life of kia into a proper long 30 minute per episode series on something like netflix mm -hmm. so uh it's going to be a process and it's going to be very long difficult you know but 
I think it's worth it. She deserves it. Because a lot of people in the comments of the YouTube series have been like, when is this coming onto Netflix? When is this happening? Can we need longer episodes? And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> it takes money and time. Okay, right. please right. be patient. <laughs> yeah. But that's good to know that you have such a huge demand for it. Because again, even when I was watching, I, I was kind of in the same boat. I'm like, okay, I could definitely see this getting eventually going a little bit longer. And I feel like it would be something that you would see on like a Netflix or like a Hulu or something like that. Oh, absolutely. I definitely, yeah. yeah, I definitely want it to be uh, something like a Netflix series or like a, oh, in Australia we have Binge and Foxtel. So Mm -hmm. yeah, Yeah. so would love to see it on something like that as well. Just I'm open, I'm not going to pigeonhole us. I'm, I'm open to a lot of things, but that's where the trajectory is right now some type of streaming platform would be yes. I feel like it would just yes. fit it so perfectly oh you're, yes, you're totally absolutely. on the right track absolutely um absolutely. I, I want to ask you to one of the things that I think is always fascinating is like especially again with the quality of the content that you're producing what does like an average day look like and I guess you could kind of take this into two different fields here like you have your social media content which is inherently a little bit shorter and then you have your YouTube content which is probably a little bit longer on average what does a day or what does the turnaround time look like from developing the concept to the shooting editing and then getting it out there what like what does the timeline look like like per video per platform so for like a regular real TikTok type of thing yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so that is I usually start writing uh scripting Okay. and planning at the start of the week and then at some point in the middle of the week is when we start to film and then the editing happens and then rinse and repeat <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a it's a weekly thing I think a lot of other content creators they film like months and months in advance uh, I would love to do that but I would also like to keep things really fresh because sometimes mm-hmm. something that is gonna hit a month ago might not hit now so yeah that's very true I do like keeping things a little fresh in that regard although I can see the value in doing things months in advance as well especially Mm -hmm. if I was going on a holiday which I am and now I'm just like (laughs) oh shit now I gotta like write this whole month out (laughs) which is a lot of work but it's yeah that's what you gotta do yeah well I think it's really neat too because then then I don't know. It, it's got to be hard when you know that you're sitting, especially if you're sitting on a gold mine. Like if you know that you're sitting on a video that your fans are waiting for too, it's got to be hard, like sitting on that for too long. I would be like, all right, a couple days. And then like, I got to oh, get yeah. the system. And then you ride the high yes. and keep going the adrenaline high. Yes. Oh. Because like, I think, I think you write something now and then, but right. it's okay. It's funny now because it's relevant now, but then a month later, you don't know if that's going to be relevant anymore. And then maybe it would have gotten more views if you had just posted it when you wrote it right you know so that's I go weekly (laughs) (laughs) but there you go I I want to ask you are you how how do your family and friends perceive having a career in social media I know a lot of my friends that do have careers in social media their family they didn't really it, it wasn't that they didn't support it but they rather didn't understand it And then now, obviously, that they're more established and that they're able to prove that they can sustain themselves off of it. Now their family and friends are much more indulged and they're like, oh, yeah, that's that's my daughter. That's my friend, whatever the case. So have you always had support? Do you have a very like tight knit support system? What does that look like for you in terms of being a content creator? I in terms of being a content creator, it's different. Mm -hmm. That's a very different vibe. I think my parents have come to terms with the <laughs> fact that I want to be an actor and mm-hmm. that, that I am an actor. I think they've come to terms with it. Uh, are they happy with it? Um, I, no comments. <laughs> I think, I think it's safe to say that they would have probably rather I did something else with my life. Uh, but I think they're, they're indifferent. They're okay with me being an actor. Content creator, though, that's interesting. I don't think that they're aware of this, what you said before, which is they don't get it. They don't understand it. It's that. And also, I think they still prefer if I did something else with my life. So 
Well, I think that you're doing great for what it's worth. Um, Thank you. I want to ask you too, this is kind of our final question here, but obviously you're signed with Viral Nation and it's a fantastic agency that is just, I've worked with them for almost half a year now and it's been such a great experience. Take me back in time to the moment that you realized that you were having the opportunity to sign with such a fantastic agency and also the fact that even, you know, you can have representation and they can help you plan and strategize and leverage any opportunities. Take me back into time and let me know what that was like for you and, and share your story in terms of having the opportunity to sign with Viral Nation. Um, well, I started doing content and then I was like, uh, I started getting approached by brands to do deals and stuff. Yeah. And I, yeah, I'm not very good at cutting my own deals because I will probably sell myself very short. <laughs> Uh, so I was like, no, I definitely need help. Uh, and then I, then we got, then I signed with Viral Nation. Then I met Michael. Michael is my agent slash manager from Viral Nation. And he's great. He's excellent. Love him so, so much. We have so much fun talking together all the time. So I think the experience has been fantastic. And I would absolutely recommend it and do it all over again. That is awesome. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for speaking with us. Go ahead and um, let our audience know where they can find you on social media. If you want to go ahead and just list off your handles and anything that you have that you want to promote. Obviously, everybody check out Life of Kia, but you have the floor. Thank you. Um, you can find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook at Liana underscore Kia. I think Facebook is just Liana Kia, but Instagram and TikTok is Liana underscore Kia. Uh, and Life of Kia is on my channel on YouTube. Liana Kia. See you there. <laughs> Everybody go watch. Make sure that you guys like, subscribe, and follow. It's really great content. You are so inspirational. And just thank you so much again for, for speaking with us and for giving us some of your time today. And just keep doing what you're doing. I really, really enjoy your content. It brings me so much joy and I binge it oh. every time you watch it. So thank you for thank you for making content like that. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Uh, and I'm so grateful to be here. Awesome. Likewise. Thank you.